like now to introduce the next speaker, Sheila Sedinger. Um, this year, uh, she, earlier this year, Sheila um, had a really, <laughs> she led a creative battle to stay in Canada. Um, of Mexican origin, she fought to stay when uh, she was faced with the threat of deportation and deportation without her two, ch two young daughters with her. So, um, Sheila, thanks for being here. Thank you, everyone. I want to share my thoughts with you. Um, okay. Loving parents do anything for their children and family. Daily, all over the world, mothers and families uh, and fathers are faced with a hard decision of keeping their kids in a place where they risk to suffer and die or have to do a mortally risk move that brings hope for a better and safer future. This was the case of the family of Gordy, which the risky move uh, that was to the cost of two innocent children and their mother and a devastated father. Worst is to know that they had family here in Canada and were trying desperately to help them settle in here, but the Canadian system acted, acted as a barrier, not an ally. This family is only one of the thousands all over the world which tried to go to where they believe to be better places, but they have no idea of the hell that the government in these cold safe places is about to offer them. We live in a world where humanism and compassion are rarely seen in power. We have known of the Syrian problems for years, and for decades we've seen similar problems all over the world. But I ask to the Canadian government, especially to Stephen Harper, why does it take a picture of a, uh, of a dead toddler to start showing humanism and compassion? And how do you dare to say that our country has the most genuine immigration and refugee system in the world, yet you daily reject and mistreat entirely refugee families, separating kids from their parents, allowing them to return to a country that your system knows they will go back in danger and economically broken because they have to fight your own general rules. It's time, Mr. Harper, and all politicians that just reacted to open your eyes and see the reality of we are of what we are daily living. This is not only one little boy, his brother and his mother who face this tragic end. This is one of the thousands that you've ignored in the past. It's time to do what you promised and be a really a real compassionate and caring human being. This is not about politics, this is about lives in constant risk. For the rest of us, as a mother that had to struggle and fight against the system to keep my family united and safe, I ask all of you to individually make a difference and to unite together to have this solidarity and movement before waiting for another picture, image, or video of a devastating scene. We should be the difference that prevents others to undergo the horrors. To the people and to the government, let's be the difference. Remember that one action could save, could save thousands of lives and is in our hands. Do what's right. It only takes you to that. Thank you very much.